There's no place like my country home in the hills of Ohio. Hey guys, Wayne here. Soft pretzels have always been a favorite of mine. And a few years ago, I learned how to make them, so I thought I would show you how I make soft pretzels. So without anything else, let's just dive right into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is proof our yeast. So I've got one and a half cups of very warm water um, right out of the tap. And I've got two tablespoons, no, one tablespoon of sugar. So we're going to take the one tablespoon of sugar, mix that up with a whisk or a spoon or whatever you have. And we are going to get that nice and dissolved. And then we're going to take our one package of active dry yeast. We're going to dump that in. Give it just a tiny stir. And then we're going to wait about 10-15 minutes for that to proof. So when that proofs, we'll come back. Okay, so the yeast has proofed. which That's looking good. What we're going to do is take four and a half cups of all-purpose flour and on top of it I have um, two teaspoons of salt. It's That's coarse kosher salt. And I'm just going to dump that right into the mixing bowl. I'm going to take two ounces of melted butter. I weighed this. I'm not sure how much it is, um, but the recipe calls for two ounces. So I've got two ounces of melted butter. And then, of course, we are going to add our yeast slurry. And we're going to take our hook attachment. And we're going to start mixing this until it all comes together on a low speed. And then once it mixes together, we're going to boost the speed and knead it a little bit. Okay, so it's starting to come together, and I have boosted the speed a little bit. You can tell that the motor is starting to bog down. I'm going to boost the speed up again and really get that together. Once it comes together, it'll start kneading. What I always look for is when it starts pulling the dough off the side of the bowl. completely came together. I'm going to boost the speed up just a little bit more. And that's going to knead that dough. We're going to leave that for about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, so I think that's been plenty long enough. So what we're going to do now is check it. And this is going to be sticky. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to put the mixer up. We're going to turn this out, knead it a little bit, and then uh, we're going to let it rise. So uh, let me put the mixer up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I am going to lay down some flour because it's nice and sticky, making sure to get some on your hands like that, like that. We're going to turn this dough out. And now we're just going to knead it a few minutes. We don't need to knead it a whole lot, but just, just need to work it a little bit. Okay, I think that's plenty good enough. So what we're going to do is kind of just flatten it out a little bit, roll it in on itself, like that, flip it over, now I'm going to use the same bowl, the same mixing bowl, and uh, I've coated this with vegetable oil. And then what we're going to do is cover it with a tea towel, or any kind of towel for that matter, 
and um, really that needs to be damp. It'll help keep that from drying out. So we're going to leave this sit in a warm place for at least one hour or until that dough has doubled in size. And then we will come back after that. Okay, so our dough has doubled in size. Now it's time to turn it out and kind of uh, punch it down just a little bit, get some of the air bubbles out. Okay, so now that we've worked it out just a little bit, we're going to cut it into eight equal slices. They don't have to be perfect, just eyeball it. Okay, so we have our eight equal slices. Now we're going to take each one of them and kind of just fold it down on itself, work it out a little bit. And take your fingertips and just start rolling, kind of uh, coming out as you roll. You want to go and make it about, I'd say 20 inches long. You're not really measuring too much, but you want to get it long enough to, uh, to fold together. Okay, so once you get it rolled out, it's not going to be perfect, but you want to kind of make it the same diameter. You want to make it into a little bit of a horseshoe. Kind of cross it over. Give it another twist. And then bring it up. And that is a somewhat of a pretzel shape. I'm not a baker. I'm not a chef. But... That is pretty much what I go for. Make it look halfway like a pretzel. Okay, so we're going to do the rest of them and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so before we put them in the oven, we need to do this step here. We've got uh, 10 cups of boiling water mixed with two-thirds of a cup of baking soda. We need to submerge this in the baking soda mixture for 30 seconds. And the reason we do this is... It changes the pH level of the dough and gives it that mahogany brown look to it. If you skip this step, you will not have mahogany brown pretzels. They'll still cook, but they'll come out looking pale and pasty and not very appetizing. So don't skip this step. And you want to put it in for about 30 seconds and then pull it out. And then I just use a spider. Then when you pull it out, you want to put it on a slightly greased cookie pan or sheet pan. Okay, so we've got one more step before we put them in the oven. We need to brush on some egg wash, which is one egg yolk and one tablespoon of water. This will also help to brown it up, but it's also going to help the salt to stick. Okay, so now that we have that done, it's time to add the salt. And I am going to be using coarse kosher salt, but you can use pretzel salt. So all I'm going to do is just sprinkle it around on each one of them. You can put as little or as much as you want. I like a lot. Okay, so all the salt is on. Now it's time to put these into the oven. 450 degrees for 12 to 14 minutes. And through the magic of YouTube, they have been baking for 14 minutes and they look delicious. They've got to cool down though because uh, they are scorching hot. So as soon as they cool down, then we'll do the taste test. Alright guys, well now you know what time it is. My favorite part, the taste test. Now you can use any kind of cheese sauce or mustard that you want. I'm going to try this one plain. <laughs> That's great. That's excellent. Crunchy on the outside, soft and fluffy on the inside like a pretzel is supposed to be. And then of course the salt gives it that extra 
nice finishing touch. That is great. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.